Hi there, Simon from simonwood.com. Uh, I have three uh, Cabernet Sauvignon blends here uh, from three different countries, all in the Southern Hemisphere, three di different vintages as well. So I'm doing it in, in, in vintage order. First one I've got here is from Australia and uh, whereabouts from Victoria. And it's called The Unexpected. And it's unexpected because it's got, it's got Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot in there, but it's also got um, Tempranillo, less familiar, and it's got Sagrantino in there. Sagrantino, if you don't know it, it's a grape from uh, central Italy uh, where it makes, um, now, is it Umbria or Tuscany, or is it like on the border between the two? Sagrantino di Montefalcone, uh, isn't it? Um, oh, uh, if I've probably got that wrong, but uh, someone will shoot me for that. Uh, but uh, it's, it, 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 there it makes uh, wines that have got lots of fruit, but also this quite hefty whack of tannin. Maybe you want to think of it as um, Italy's uh, Tanat or, uh, or Malbec. Anyway, let's see how it survives in this blend. Give it a whirl. Well, I can't say I noticed much uh, that... If, if you'd said that there, were, there wasn't Sagrantino in there, I, I would have been very happy to believe that what I see here is uh, what I call a slightly um, uh, commercial, yeah, it's a, it's a young, fresh Aussie blend, uh, which has got this uh, little waft of black currant. Uh, there's the mint in there. It feels uh, ever so slightly jammy dodger fruit flavoured. Um, and um, it smells, it, it's, it's going to be okay, but I'm not, uh, I'm not, I don't think it's going to be a great wine. I like its freshness got that little bite of uh, acidity and maybe that's where the Sagrantino's uh, lending its it lending its weight and maybe a little bit of spice too but it's a, it's it's general mint and berry those are and, and not too much mint sometimes mint can uh, uh, really take over in Australian wines but here they've got it yeah it's 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 okay it's it's quite refreshing um, and there's this juicy edge but just veering towards the jammy hey it's okay Next one. Uh, so we are in New Zealand with this one. This is Mission Estate Winery in Hawke's Bay. And it's a 2013 Cabernet Merlot. Let's try this. A little bit leafy, a little bit uh, toasty, uh, darker blackcurrant fruit. The, if, if the first one, the, the unexpected, was more on the berry side, this veers towards, more towards the, uh, the, the blackcurrant. Uh, there is something that uh, again says um, maybe that it's been slight, handled a little bit too much. It doesn't feel relaxed and it may just be that it need, I've only just um, undone the, the, the cap and it may just be it le needs a, a few more minutes to relax into its glass. So I'll, I'll keep swirling for a bit and then uh, taste it and come back. And it does slowly um, come out of its shell and that um, uh, and when you taste it uh, there's this black currant, there's a little bit of um, damson and plum, and I was talking about mintiness on the first one. Here, um, there's, a, there's a slightly herbal character, uh, not v going into the, uh, the green pepper or anything like that, but yes, like a herbal freshness that um, perks it up. It's not hugely complex, it's, um, it's a 10 quid wine, it's not trying to be hugely complex. They, they, they do do some more uh, ambitious uh, bottlings, but um, this is, I think this is just sort of general, um, glug it and, um, and enjoy it. So I'm gonna have, finish this last glug. Like the earthy tannins, fair enough wine. Okay, I'm interested in it on the alcohol. 14% for the first one. Uh, that one weighs in at 13 and a half, so not much different. Uh, this next one is a Vinalba of Reservado 2012, Cabernet Sauvignon Malbec Merlot. Um, now, whereabouts are we in Owen? Oh, because they, these guys do stuff in Patagonia, uh, but this is uh, their, their wine from, from Mendoza, uh, weighing in at 14 and a half percent alcohol. Let's give it a whirl. It's a fuller, fleshier style here. Uh, it feels like there's going to be much more ripeness, juiciness, um, softness, uh, plumpness. And um, yes, it feels like the, the Malbec is the thing that's driving the middle of it. The Cabernet Sauvignon is maybe adding a, a little bit of um, a bit extra black currant in there. I'm not sure what the Merlot is doing, but a um, little bit of toastiness from oak. Uh, but um, it smells like it's going to be the most user-friendly of the ones so far. And it's a big, full, fleshy style. Not too big, not too full. It's not gone uh, towards the jammy or anything like that. Um, 
and there was this um, a, almost like a gravel like note that's um, uh, that's keeping it all fresh. So there was these big juicy, slightly chocolate tinged um, black currant and dark berry flavours, but then this mineral chocolate and um, other nuances going on in there. Um, it feels like a wine that um, still has a little bit of time to uh, uh, to develop, so, uh, almost like one of those you want to open at uh, six o'clock and serve at eight o'clock, yeah, and I think it will be all the better for that. But um, straight out of the bottle now, it looks pretty good. Um, I think it's my favourite of those three. Um, and uh, actually, I pro I probably, it, it, in terms of tasting order, I tasted the uh, the last was the best, the middle was the second, uh, and the unexpected was okay, but uh, it was just. It was all right. Well, no, no, not not to go to uh, cross the road to, uh, uh, to to grab a bottle, but if it was on my side of the road, I would probably linger and have a glass. Hey, see you soon.